This is County Kerry in South West Ireland. I've come here with someone who's a radical journalist, an outspoken broadcaster and a campaigning feminist. She's often caused a stir and yet, for all that, she's not sure what the fuss is all about. Her name is Leslie Ruddock. It all sounds like cliches, but I can't believe that I'm different from anyone else and perhaps that's what drives me. If I'm able to do uh, journalism and write things that people kind of identify with, wh why doesn't my pal down the road do it? You know, if, if I can organise my life and feel that I can be in charge of things that women haven't done before, why can't the last that was beside me in school? You know, I just find these things completely incomprehensible. Leslie has strong opinions on most things, so I'm not sure how well we'll get on. I don't like sort of organised things like this. Um, I know, I know it's, it's great that actually this has been left. There's, it wasn't some American landowner left it to the state. Yeah. So I suppose that's fine. It gives these guys a job anyway. It just feels very artificial and strange and everything's fenced off. And I know I'm in a sort of bit of a minority of ones who being quite this venomous about the whole thing, but uh, I think this kind of lures people into saying, oh, that'll do, we went out. You know, we had a bit of exercise, like, because they walked from the car park to here. And, um... It's, it's a calm, it really, really kind of irritates me. But I hope Leslie would find the rest of her walk more to her liking. We'd agreed to cross the most deserted part of Kerry. Starting at Macross House, we'd head over Tommy's Mountain to the well-known landmark of Kate Kearney's Cottage. Then we'd traverse McGillicuddy's Reeks a deserted range of mountains that includes the highest point in Ireland, Carn Tuhill. Finally, we climb Caja before descending to journey's end at Glencar. Almost all my knowledge of Ireland comes from Irish folk songs, yeah. and I found it very strange driving over here. You know, coming to Cork, and that would remind me of songs. I think the Irish are great at that, making the ordinary sort of extraordinary. People like Van Morrison are bizarre. You know, he writes songs about places like Arklo, Coney Island. I was in Coney Island recently, and uh, it's a dumb. You know, he's written songs about Orange Fields and Cypress Avenue, and I mean, I grew up beside there. I got my blooming polio jag in, 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 uh, on Orange Fields and Cypress Avenue. I failed to learn the piano. They're not magical places, but simply because they're sung about, they sound brilliant. Oh. Open skies. Cloudy skies. Sky. Oh. We can either go over the, that low hill and into the, the big quarry, the Coombe, uh -huh. and up onto Tommy's Mountain, which is the one covered with clouds. Yeah. Or else we can go up over here and then work our way around Shea Mountain, uh -huh. uh, the Purple Mountain, and then down eventually to Cape Kearney's. Right, which is the it's pub. The pub. <laughs> and the first time I've been this of the trip. I'm looking oh, forward oh to yes, that. Oh, yes, uh huh. That's true. You oh, you can have a cup of coffee any. if you'd rather. No, I'll manage to uh, throw some alcohol down, I think. Leslie's background is unusual. She was brought up in Belfast and only moved to Scotland in her teens. Although she considers herself Scottish and is fiercely patriotic, others often mistake her for being Irish. What's your sort of general perception of, of Ireland? Sometimes I worry about this getting over romantic about Ireland, you know. But it's we a hell of a just... romantic country, do you think so? <laughs> well, that, and the point is the Irish are sensible enough to know that, ah. so they sell it. Yeah. There's no country so close to us that we know less about. This is my favourite part of Ireland, and I wanted to compare my views with Leslie's. Her childhood in the north meant that for many years she had little experience of the rest of the country. With a strict Presbyterian upbringing, her early views of the south were cloaked in prejudice. I suppose Catholics were over the border. I mean, we didn't go over the border much. Um, and I'm not sure quite why there was such a, a feeling of almost contempt actually, uh -huh. that uh, people in the south were slow, they were rural, they were poor, um, they queued to come over the border to get uh, petrol because it was cheaper in the north, and you know, generally everybody just sort of thought they were backward. You see, so much about Northern Ireland is very British, we couldn't do Irish history, so you were left with this kind of uncertain feeling. How could you say you were Irish? Because you were nothing. When well, you're aware of all the, 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 you know, the bits and pieces of war, because really you, we're talking about a country at war yeah, with itself. Yeah. We, 
No, no, not at all. I mean, it has to be said, I was, you know, young when I was there, but it would be all sort of fringe things that would happen. Like, for example, you couldn't park a car outside anything that you're going to. And, you know, my mum still does this, that we don't park in front of anything. You know, it seems perverse, but we park around the corner. But I never saw the blood and guts. It's ironic that while Leslie knows so much about the North, it's only in recent years that she started to explore the South. Stopping for a promised pint at Kate Kearney's, we met local walkers Sean O'Sullivan and Aidan Fort. The name McGillicuddy Reeks, I mean, what is that? Because it sounds weird. Oh, McGillicuddy was an O'Sullivan. It was a sept of the O'Sullivans. So, uh, so it was one of your last He was, he was, yes. <laughs> and, and, um, Big man, wasn't he? Now, um, he, he would have been a large landlord here. Mm -hmm. So the Reeks would have been part of his land. So but that's how he was dubbed. Down. Reeks are stacks, so the ricks would be the mountains, and McGillicuddy, who was the landlord here, he actually, the McGillicuddy family would be a sept of the O'Sullivan, but they were the big landowners here, and what you will see under you as you walk along as well, and, and around the Devil's Ladder is the Hagel Glen that's under you, and um, there is, in many cultures, there is uh, the myth of the old hag. But I do understand in the Hags Glen that there was an old lady who lived there in the last century. A hag? Who would have been a hag, yes. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? You just yeah. get old when you're a woman and you become an automatic <laughs> yeah, hag. Yeah, yeah. Be careful going, going along the top, <laughs> Leslie. <laughs> you see, I have a theory that an old hag wouldn't, w wouldn't worry me, you see. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I wouldn't only so sure about Cameron, you need to watch yourself. Yeah. Always yeah. bad vibes. Well, All that revenge. Yeah, well, be sure you're not dressed in black or something. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I see, someone's thinking, I was the old hag come, yes, to, the, yes, come yes. to life. But anyway, yes. let us not, uh, let's not dwell on these things. <laughs> <laughs> and with that thought, we set off for the high ground. The route over McGillicuddy's Reeks involves over 12 miles of undulating ridge walking, with over 6,000 feet of ascent before we'd reach the next village. Now, the only company Leslie and I would have was each other. It was time to find out more about her, and those strong beliefs. What would your definition of feminism be? Um, Probably no, I don't think. No, and actually you're the first human being that's ever asked me that. This is, this is the thing that amazes me. So here I am, answering this for the first time ever. What is feminism? Well, see, a lot of people think it's about kind of equality between the sexes, but I think it's more about um, taking down the artificial barriers between gender women own something like, was it, 2% of, of the world's assets? You know, stuff like that does get to be a struggle, because who's got the other 98%? Um, I've, I've kind of accused you of, of being a campaigning feminist. No, so I don't see that as an accusation. You, you, you accept that? I've sort of got a vision in my head of what things can be like, and it bores me, this sort of rigid separation of everybody. And I guess, from the Northern Ireland background, it freaks me out, because, you know, you can see what social sort of segregation and ghettos do to people and don't they see that? Don't people understand after years of apartheid in Northern Ireland that you can't go around separating everyone off into boxes without creating the problems you spend the rest of your life trying to sort? While our backgrounds are very different, Leslie and I have a lot in common. Not only does she love walking, but she also has a deep love of solitude. Leslie owns an isolated cottage in the Scottish Highlands which she lovingly refers to as her body. It acts as an escape and a refuge. Sometimes I think it's really been my sanity. It's 1,200 foot up the side of a hill. It's got no electricity, no water. Uh, there's nothing except really just the roof and the walls. Um, it's just given me a chance to kind of reflect an awful lot. I have just the best time doing, doing completely ham-fisted repairs that nobody in their right mind would let me do. I've been pointing the sides of things with my idea of cement, which is probably polyfill and flour, on top of three sets of pieces of furniture that's taken me all day to drag out of the house, rather than go and get a ladder. See, who would indulge you like that? If you had company, people would always come in and say, you're absolutely daft. Right. And it's like being a child without your parents around, ever. It's interesting to see this landscape where you've got all the dwellings, all the fields, the work of man, and then suddenly we come up against this, which I would like to call wilderness. It does make me wonder sometimes about um, 
the kind of idolization of areas like this by people who nevertheless choose not to live in them. Uh -huh. I'm really intrigued by this, this thing you have about people in the landscape. <laughs> it's it's sure. really interesting. I mean, you, you've mentioned to me that people think you're odd because you like to get away from folk. Yeah, and because I'm a woman. You see, men are allowed to have this thing that they can, you know, go away and want to be on their own and have all these big thoughts and stuff like that. Oh, what do you mean, big thoughts? Well, I think that's what people think guys do when they plod off, I mean, you know, mountaineers, <laughs> whatever. That somehow this big stoking of a furnace going on and, you know, big monumental thoughts are happening inside them. And nobody thinks it's just because they can't get on with people. But with women, you see, you're supposed to be nurturing and sociable and gregarious. So if you turn your back on all that, you're a witch. I mean, that's one reason women got burnt, because yeah. they like to live on their own. I sense somehow you're probably not a great man for astrology, you see? I'm not at all, no. I, I, I don't know. That could you be something to your things. star sign, actually, Cameron. But, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a Piscean, right? And there's two definite currents there. On the one hand, I like extremes. I like to be extremely alone, and I like to be extremely at the middle of things. And my life allows me to do both of these things. It's the suburbia of life I can't handle. It's the long straights and the sort of compromising, mediocre middle bits. I just can't do them, really. Well, I've got to agree with you there, and that's a great reason to go walking. Uh-huh, yeah. It's a good reason to look at the map as well. So <laughs> where, where, where the hell are we? Right. <laughs> good question. Knock and Vraka, knock and Vraka. Yeah. I probably pronounced knock it wrong. We've we'll been coming up here anyway, and then we'll go down and then onto the big hill. Uh-huh. The big gun. The big see. gun, yeah. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Is that too masculine for you, the big gun? Oh, come on now. <laughs> You've not seen Selma Louise. You know, women can use guns as well. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But I think we should go on there anyway. Yeah, I have to. Um, talk about astrology, because I'm interested in what you're saying. I'm interested in how it actually affects your life. Not, right. in, not in astrology itself, because I think it's a lot of nonsense, but I'm interested in how uh, it, yeah. you see it affect If I, I managed to guess your star sign right first go, would that make any impression yeah, on you? Do. Okay, well, I'll think about it. I'd have to, no, you have to get the moment. Ah. Okay, come on. Mrs. Pisces, and I hope they are. <laughs> Ms., if you don't mind. <laughs> well, you'll lead the way then. I will. That'll be the thing. I will. If you're happy with me to do that. Aye. I won't open any doors for you or anything. <laughs> You think people think you're a bit crazy because you do, but you think I'm crazy because I, I oh, like to go where there are fewer people. You definitely are crazy. <laughs> you see, you're, you're so crazy, you've just like lost track of the fact that you're totally unusual. See, uh, you say that you don't, you don't really like people. I love well, mankind, but I don't like people very yes, much. Yes, right. Well, I see, most people feel really nervous when they're not surrounded by people. The noises of people, the products of people. And you think that's normal? You think it's normal to to like to have people around you too. Well, I would imagine there's something almost primal about it, actually. But, you know, for the propagation of the species, you know, you couldn't have a species that reproduced itself very well by wanting to get away from everyone, could you? Well, that's true, but you can go with very so, few actually, people. We, we, we are ruining the human species, do you realise that? Yep. <laughs> You simply can't fail to be impressed by hills like these. The soft climate and plentiful rainfall produces an atmospheric landscape. Without too much effort, you find yourself thinking back to Irish mythology and legend. There we go. The land of the Banshee oh. <laughs> and the little people. Can you see them? Can you? Do, you believe, people. Do, you, do you believe in these things? <laughs> eh? Uh, no, don't laugh. No, no. No, well, no, but obviously it comes from somewhere, doesn't it? I mean... It's stunning. I suppose there's people's reactions to all sorts of stuff that they don't know before. Why are you trying to explain that when you're the oh, person I... who believes in astrology, <laughs> you, you like to be among standing stones <laughs> and ley lines yeah. and all this stuff, and yet you're sort of trying to find excuses for the little people in the band here. Well, because I don't, I don't really go a social bundle on that. I can see, you know, it's not, it doesn't sort of fire me up. I'm not seized by banshees and stuff like that. I wouldn't be able to stay in the body if I believed in all that kind of thing. 
I can't understand Quite simple, that. Quite you see. Excuse me for saying this, but you're always a very intelligent <laughs> woman. What is it, this thing with all these, these new age things? And I can't, I can't put the two together. The astrology thing is like, it seems to me in times gone past, people were able to talk about each other's temperaments. You know, people would have a melancholic temperament or, or a bucolic temperament. And nowadays there's no way to say anything about somebody except he's a tiki bugger or something. <laughs> and, you know, you can't just sort of say, well, he's a kind of person like... A Scorpio, for example, which I'm dabbling with you being, potentially, which is kind of quite a driven sort of person, you see, sort of leadershipy, kind of magnetic Not force Scorpio, kind of thing. Sorry. No, I was, I was toying with it, you know. You only got a few left. No, there's an earthy side to you, and I think you might be Capricorn or something like that instead. No. Well, there you oh, go. Oh. Never mind. Listen, here we are. Up. <laughs> Kaha, calm, tool, being care. I mean, what, what do you think of it? Well, it's, it's stunning. It, it really is stunning. This this kind of ripple effect down of all those. Uh, calls there, the, the little lochans. You know, Adam does seem to be all about sort of softness and accessibility, and this is a bit of a steely corner. Almost a contradiction, isn't it? Aye. It's it's a bit like it. you and the, the new agey things. That's, it, it, it may seem strange to you, you know, but uh, there's a lot of us younger people, Cameron, <laughs> who just, you know, find it quite unremarkable. <laughs> Glad to see you're keeping your hands in your pockets there, you know. <laughs> These hills feel very elegant to me, you know. Feminine? Well, ugh, there you go again. No, just very elegant. <laughs> in a kind of gender-free way. Oh, well, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. Part of the attraction of Ireland for me has always been the pool of the west. It's yeah. that bit further west, and, you know, I've been right out here in Kerry, and, and we're travelling west, and I always feel there's a, there's a pool, the, the ancient... Kels used to call it Tier and an Og. Oh, yes, yes, uh -huh, yeah. The land of the ever young. You're right, there do seem to be more of this on the west. Well, it's curious, I mean, the, the sun sets in the west, and that should be an old thing, you know, like it dies in the west. Uh, but it does have this idea of youth. And I, th I think almost sex. To me, the east of things seems to be ancient and old, and that the west seems to be kind of sexy and new. Yeah. A new day, and we're now at the heart of our walk over McGillicuddy's Reeks. In fact, right above the infamous Hag's Glen, which turns out to be less fearful than it sounds. Look at that. Yeah. See, there's, just, there's all these connotations, Hag's Glen and Dibble's Ladder. And then what we have up there is a big cross leading us upward. Yes. Quite a religious sort of place, really. Is that, is that uh, I kind of hope it's just a simple thing, because that would be quite reasonable, you know. We can't get any more simple than a cross, can we? Well, you can have a huge, big, whopping one, you know. Well, it's, <laughs> it's a huge, neon big, lights one. on it, you know. Well, like apparently, a sort of apparently they were at one time. You're joking. No, I'm not. I, I, I kid you not. There's apparently. lights on it. There were lights on it, so you could see it from <laughs> Killarney, you see. Oh, for heaven's sake. There's a flat in your space potential here, isn't there? We don't have to stay in the footpath, though. No. I think sometimes people are like sheep, you know, and they follow each other. It's good to be like a goat yeah. now and again. Yes, oh, absolutely. Go your own way. Ooh. Yeah. It's kind of strange, though, these days, when we get people coming to Ireland, for example, and hiring a horse-drawn gypsy caravan for a couple of weeks. And probably the people who lived like that would... <laughs> Yeah. You know, we'd never have dreamt that folk were paying good money to come and live like that. Yes, it is. Pretty paradoxical. We have it so easy we come to do these things for recreation. Yes. <laughs> yes, that is the last. I think interesting people are people like gillies and keepers who have to live and work in very isolated places or lighthouse keepers. Um, and I don't know if they sort of sanctify these places of isolation as much as we do. I mean, some of them do. I think the new, the new breeds tend to, because a lot of them deliberately pick a career like that, because they want to be Aye. in such places. We see, that's it again. That's, that element of choice wasn't there for the guys who used to do it. Well, 
there it is. E. Fantastic. Oh, look at that. Great. Binkera. Kaha. Karantuhal. 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 3,414 feet above sea level. The highest mountain in all Ireland. From the top well of done. the whole thing. Through there, well done. <laughs> Well right, now you're going up the torch. <laughs> I'll give you a leg up. <laughs> yeah, I think fantastic. I mean, let's have a seat here, because right. I think we deserve a wee break after that, to be honest. <sighs> oh. oh, that was a long pool up there. Was, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's terrific. Isn't it? Well, how does it feel to be in the top of, of Ireland? <laughs> it's terrific. It's a nice feeling to know that there's nobody else above us. Yep. In the whole of this island, it's, it's something else. It's a very kind of full thing for the eye, isn't it? Just, just you can't stop taking things in. Every time you look, there's, there's a new aspect of things. And there's so many different kinds of view you can get from here. This is mind-boggling. Something powerful about it. But this is also something um, for me about the process of getting up here, you know, because every time you you look at the next bit, you think it's completely unattainable or it's going to feel dangerous or dodgy. And actually, each time you get there, it's wider than it looks, it's a bit safer than it looks. I mean, I know that we've just had some good weather, but, um, you know, maybe life's like that. It always looks dodgy and then you kind of keep going and actually you find your way, you know? Um, it's, it's like doing the whole of your life in a very short span coming up a mountain. And uh, to be able to stand at the top's great. Of course, going down is a bit of a... That rather ruins the theory, doesn't it? Have you ever studied psychology? <laughs> <laughs> no, that would, that would be what they call... for psychoanalyzing everything. Really? Yeah, do you think so? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, what else do you do with your head when you're sort of, you know, you're in neutral? Well, I came up to these mm. places to empty it, just to let it, mm -hmm. <laughs> to let it empty as well. Well, maybe I've just got a lot more crap in there to get rid of than you. <laughs> maybe I'll need, need a flush mechanism again. <laughs> 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 yeah. From Carn Two Hill to the next summit of Caha is a delightful ridge walk, and yet neither of us could quite manage to empty our minds. We just couldn't resist speculating on these hills and how they affect us. We have the superstition that the Irish have the little people and the banshee and all the rest of it, but I think it's because of the sort of environment we're living in. You know, ideally, like this one, there is a bit of mist about. It has a supernatural aspect. Sometimes scenes look to me like they're in black and white, and you can imagine someone looking at them in sort of 16 or something or other. Uh -huh. Or you can imagine people walking just where we are now. And effectively, they're all dead and it didn't matter and you can't remember their names. And now here we are and we matter so much to ourselves. But we'll end up, you know, we'll be like that too. Because I think myself actually that uh, if Captain Kirk had this wrong, it isn't space doing the final frontier, it's time. I mean, going back in time, you'd be stuck with this problem of your 20th century expectations. Yeah. I mean, for one thing, I'd be far too bulky for a woman. You know, now I can say what I think, and men are so blooming nervous that nobody will give you a decent argument. Well, I mean, I can only say one thing to that. Amen. <laughs> well, what will we argue about now? I did one of these psychometric tests once, and I was at the highest Swedish peak for sensation seeking. <laughs> I was off the record of anything for risk taking, and I was the most depressed person I'd come across. Oh. So they were really embarrassed about that. But that's not how I'd found Leslie. In fact, I now realise just how much wild places like this mean to her. I would even make her a non-literary mountain man, in a non-gender specific way, you understand. It was all downhill from here, a moment on any hill walk that usually provokes a mixture of emotions. Well, part of it feels very sad. I mean, actually even getting to a downward incline begins to feel like you're losing something. Um, I mean, I guess when you're down, then that's something else again. But this just feels like a kind of loss. And altogether, it's just not something that you would see anywhere else, I don't think. But on the other hand, uh, I don't think I'd be able to live in Ireland again. Well, there is at least one bonus at the bottom of the hill. There's a pint that's probably going to be We're there. We're going to pint again. <laughs> yeah, come on, let's go. <laughs> Only about a couple of miles down there. Yeah. Get closer to it. 
first. Yours is a pint of Guinness, mine's a half and a half. <laughs> and a game of pool, maybe? Oh, now, the game of pool. You've really wandered too far there. <laughs> maybe I've You're up wrong against thing. a shark, I have to tell you. But there was one final piece of good luck. Brock inspectors. These impressive phenomena are shadows cast by the sun onto the mist. You can spend years in the hills and never see them. Can you see it? No. No? Oh, God. Just this right. Just, oh, yeah. Yeah, just this right there. Yeah. I was looking so far. That's wonderful. God, that is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, it's getting stronger. Look. Oh, no, yeah. Can you see? Oh, it's too yeah. <laughs> Can you see mine as well? Yeah, <laughs> Good grief. Brilliant. Well, let's take that as an omen from the mountain. <laughs> that they've approved of a walk. <laughs> Fantastic. You know, there's people walk the hills 20, 30 years and never seen that. By this time, I think I've got the measure of Leslie, but there's one point still to be scored, and that's on the pool table. Are you one of these people who takes a shot and you've got the next two, three, no, 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 I quite enjoy just get one go <coughs> like that, you wow. know. <laughs> and all the guys go, whoa, you know. <laughs> I, I like one like that, and I just think it doesn't really matter what happens to the black, does it? You know, because already they've been going, you know. <laughs> yeah. so it doesn't really matter if you win or not. As long as no, you've got some really. good shot, I'll but I will know. beat you. You know what I mean? I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> ah! Oh dear! Yeah, look, look at that. Look at that. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not going to do a tiny fan. <laughs> Oh, well done. <laughs> well done. Best of three. Yay, come on, yeah. <laughs> Poet David Craig travels through the Highlands next week. Wilderness Walks is at the same time, 8 o'clock. Next here on BBC Two, useful tips in gardening from scratch.